And you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This. Uh, my name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show, as usual, is my co-host, Honey Ogunde. Uh, on the show, we're going to be talking about um, alternative sources of funding for your business. And um, I mean, generally in Nigeria, the normal thought you hear from any entrepreneur, about 70% of mm-hmm. them, is that the usual problem they have is they can get funding for their business. Even though I don't generally agree that funding is the first thing they should be thinking about. But yeah, that is the uh, big thought in their mind. So, but the thing is, there are still traditional sources of funding. Um, but I'm not sure if they really work for SMEs. How can you say that funding is not the number one problem? Is our problem funding? You you are not you Accessing are not exactly funding, a startup anymore. It. Well, I'm this startup of life. I think that funding. You see, this is a problem where you don't want to grow. <laughs> she, she she wants to remain. It. So you are not. I'm like not going to take this shade on behalf of Nigeria SMEs. <laughs> funding is a serious problem for 99.9 percent of businesses. I feel your pain. It can be really hard when you're trying to grow, especially even in a high growth startup like mine. Still trying to raise funding to just keep up with that breakneck speed. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the traditional methods that we call traditional methods, uh, raising from banks, microfinance. I personally don't know any sort of SME that has raised, but you claim to have raised from from this kind of source. Before. Well, well, typically banking, they're asking you for like collateral building. Yeah, bank, if banks, I have a building, Nigeria, why why would I go? No, to but them? banks in Nigeria are not built to answer to startups uh, because they don't generally understand the funding or the the business model of an SME or a small business. Um, Nigerian businesses are built to go towards cash flow Mm -hmm. as against the sustainability of the business. What you might want to look at is maybe speaking to a microfinance bank, which is more suited to answering to you, but be careful around the interest rates because they tell you it's between 5 and 7% per... They just tell you 5 and 7%. They leave out the most important part, which is per month, which if you scale it to a year, it's about maybe 120, uh, maybe 100 uh, percent. Uh, sorry. 100 uh, percent. Altogether. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Okay, for most of us, that's not even going to be So it's, it's for short-term financing, really. Yeah, but, don't try it for long term. I think one of the first things you need to start thinking about if you're thinking about raising funding for your business is, are you looking for debt or are you uh, looking for, for equity, equity yeah, right? That's so if you're looking for debt, that's like you're taking a loan from a bank or a microfinance, one, the one that Tunji knows that gives money. Um, <laughs> but typically... Or give money. I, I know, or you can or, even or, be raising debt from family and friends, right? You can ask somebody that you know for a loan, but yeah, just be clear yeah that you make sure that the terms and conditions are very, very clear on clear. the outside mm-hmm. and that you sign it and you always understand and preferably get someone of, with a legal background to review those terms for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're not going to be raising debt in that way, then there's also equity. Yeah. And some of the ways that I've used, at least for my business, is basically raising equity from angel investors. Mm-hmm. And angel investors are basically people or individuals within your network or even within your extended network. So you might get introduced to someone. Or there are even angel groups in Nigeria. I don't know if you've heard of the Lagos Angel uh, Network. And there's mm-hmm. also an African Business Angel Network, I think. Mm-hmm. And these are formidable groups of people that you can go to to raise angel funding. And angel funding can... And the, the size can vary depending on your business needs. So it can go from, you know, 500K Naira to um, at least under 500K US dollars. So mm-hmm. there's a broad range there. There's also family and friends, which I have used. And that's a good starting place because they know you. They know your work. Mm-hmm. And they have some kind of trust in you. And they actually most of the time want to see you succeed. And I always say that if you can't convince your family and your friends to lend you money, um, then it's typically very hard to um, convince, anybody else. convince anybody else. And I think what people get caught up in, and I've been a victim to this as well, is always thinking that it has to be large. Mm-hmm. You can li- really start small. small. Just start small with something that allows you to at least demonstrate the business that, you, that you're trying to build or at least have some growth figures and that you can take to an you angel investor. And room to fail. Because, I mean, if you... If you, if you the we model don't like is failure. not exactly if the model is not properly thought out you might have thought about everything but the market doesn't like it the way you, you're bringing it out uh-huh. the fact that you had very just little financing will just make your losses very minimal then you can then get another set of financing to do it properly as against the, the way you were doing it before. you're always bringing up all the doom and gloom stories I'm talking sorry, about but that's the way my mind failure. sees things anyway like I think that there are also very non-traditional methods which people mm-hmm. don't necessarily think about. Like some of the ones that I'm always excited to hear about are like competitions and grants. And you know you can get free money, basically, yeah. mm-hmm. without them taking equity or you having to pay back interest for your startup. Mm-hmm. Um, today we're going to be talking to someone who has raised our funding for his business from a non-traditional source. Um, basically, this guy enters competitions and gets the money. As his person enter. The money is just arriving in the One account. time. Exactly. And it's not small money. If you're thinking that it's like, you know, 5K or 10K, we're talking about $10,000, 2.5 million naira here, 
300,000 US wow, dollars. What to the woo? So we're super excited to find out from him how he did it because me, I need to know. And I'm sure you guys want to know as well. Um, so join me in welcoming Chukuwezam Obano to the show. Hi, Ch Chukuwezam. How are you? Very well. It's great to be here. So tell great us a little bit about Prep Class. Oh, yeah. So Prep Class is an online platform. Essentially, what we do is we connect learners with tutors who have expertise in the things they want to learn. And it's hyper-local. So we connect you to a tutor who is as close to your house as possible. Um, and for whatever you want to learn, basic our mantra is learn anything. So the basic idea is for whatever you want to learn, there's someone who has that expertise. So, so this is like Lesson Teacher 2.0 with internet. Exactly. So you can mm. think about it that way. With internet, easy discovery, ratings and reviews for the tutors, okay, reports wow. every month, and someone tracking the progress of your child or the learner at every point in time. So yeah. the Igbo part of me has just risen up. Mm. How do you <laughs> collect $300,000 for, for teaching? Teacher something. Well, you find the right competition. Do you have any connections in the place? Mm -mm. Do you have a big man? Jesus is my leg. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. So essentially, we heard about the GSME com uh, competition. They put out a publication. Um, we read it to see if we were eligible mm -hmm. and suitable. It turned out we're both. But what was interesting about that was the fact that the publication for marketing it give examples of some startups that would be eligible. Just mm -hmm. two, actually. And Prep Class was the second one, mm. wow. which was very interesting. That's so it was like they were just calling so they, you, come like and just take this money. Name. Well, to just apply. Let's, <laughs> let's start to apply. So, I mean, we applied for it, and there were different levels and stages through it, but we managed to cross all mm -hmm. the hurdles and eventually um, got the grant 300, of $300,000. So, wait, when was, what was the exchange rate at the time? You're always yeah, making everything so was, technical. Was, was, 300,000, any exchange rate is good money. Very recent, like uh, March. Wow. April, so. But this is not the only time that you've actually raised money from grants or competition, right? So you've raised from yeah. at least some other occasions. Yes. So um, in the past, we've won a few other smaller competitions, but still we're very significant in boosting the business. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what are your top like tips in like if you're trying to apply for a competition and grant? The first one I can say from my example is just apply. <laughs> I never end up applying for anything. <laughs> so I think that's just like one easy tip. Me too, I want to apply. You have to research. You have to research and then you have to apply for this thing. So that's my that's one tip I've already taken from here today. Mm -hmm. Are there some others? So I think you first need to know. Right? Yeah. Like you just need to know. That you can apply, right? Or what? Not even that, that it's exists. available, okay. that it, it exists. You need to know when it... Because these competitions have, have deadlines. They have mm. conditions, criteria, different things. So you need to know that there's... How do you get to know? Is there some sort of So for line? different industries, mm -hmm. um, I think there are different sources of this kind of information. Okay. For tech, yeah. there are some blogs you go to check out. Maybe Tech mm. Cabal or blah, blah, blah. Mm. There are or different tech ones. Point, or yeah. Tech Point. You go, you check them out on a, on a um, consistent basis to know what exactly is happening. For some other industry, I'm sure there will be other ways um, for you to find out. So you need to know. Okay. Yeah. Now, so when you mean. learn about competition and you read the criteria, and you need to know if you're suitable um, mm. based mm. on what they say they want. So basically, if you are doing education, don't go and apply for an admin startup. I mean, you competition. usually can because it's not like anybody will stop you stop from, you but you're just you wasting your time. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so and you, your internet. And you, yeah, exactly. So based on what they say they are looking for, are you a good fit? Now, if the answer to that is yes, mm -hmm. the next thing you need to have is a good story, mm -hmm. right? So why are you doing what you're, what you're what doing? doing? Yeah. What are your plans? Are you how did you even get into it? How, how, what are you trying to solve? So yeah. what is your story because whoever is reading probably doesn't know you or know anything mm -hmm. about it your your um application needs to make sense in such a way they have an idea of what, what you're doing it's exactly. what you're doing what is and sold in a very poetic kind of way right exactly yeah, you have to you have to have an angle most mm -hmm. of the time um then the third thing is your business metrics right so your revenue social impact if you if you're a social impact focused kind of business, the hype around you, like mm -hmm. is there buzz around either you or your industry? And then the fourth thing, which Well, if how can you really apply with your hype? Um, so if there's hype around you, yeah. they might so if you if you're applying for a competition, for instance, and they ask you, and they usually would ask you to give them links to other media okay. press releases about you have some CNN link. 
uh, yeah. and oh, that Nigerian you know, dailies. yeah, dailies, uh, kind of good big names mm -hmm. there. That's, that gives helps. a lot. Yeah, it helps a lot to uh, boost your. And credibility. I think what's key is that because you've already applied to smaller ones, perhaps exactly you start getting. I yeah, so it's it's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you get one, it's usually easier to get others okay. most of the time. And also, you were saying that one of the great things about this thing is sometimes you also get additional press, right? Every time you yes, win so um. It usually doesn't come with just the money. There's a PR and the mm -hmm. attention you get, and then a lot more people get to know about what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And a very, very, very important point um, about applying for stuff is you need to you need to you need to know what the person who put out the competition is or the grant for. is looking for. Because mm -hmm. essentially, in the end, most times it's businesses that put this these things mm -hmm. out. And even if it's a CSR kind of activity, it usually it has, has some, some aim or uh, yeah. an objective mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve. Yeah. So you need to understand the objective and put yourself as much as possible in the light of the person who is doing the competition to know why they should choose you based on the objectives they have. So if you have that right, yeah. But, but uh, I, I do know that grants are not the only sources of funding that you've been able True. to raise. So uh, speaking to the uh, more equity-based uh, funding that you've got, what was the process like? Oh, how was it different from like competition? Like okay, funding? so I would say um, one of the big differences between raising money from a grant and raising money from an actual investor is the due diligence process. part process. Mm -hmm. um, and while grants usually have a time, a fixed timeline, the investors can take a lot more time doing their DD and looking through the metrics of the business and all that. So that's, and then the getting to know. So similar, the, the process is essentially the same as I mentioned before, but the difference is, well, for a competition, you can find out online. Mm. For an investor, you usually need a, a referral. And mm. that, that part is very important. So someone who knows the investor and can say, these guys are good, or like, again, if you have hype, around your business, your industry, your brand. And people just want to get in. And people just growth. want to get in. Yeah. So some, some investors are literally like, I only invest in X, maybe because that industry has hype. Mm -hmm. So the fact well, some that investors you... investors are just follow, follow. They just follow yeah. someone. <laughs> Wait for yeah, someone else to invest. Some investors do that too. call them tag along. Tag yeah. along guys. Some investors are tag along guys. So, but for some investors, the simple fact that you're in X industry, mm -hmm. they'll be interested in you just for that reason. Yeah. So that's like, those are like the main differences, the due diligence and the how to contact them uh parts to it yeah mm. but there's some other sources as well apart from like competitions and grants right even the government has different ones now i know yeah the legal state the legal state one is even particularly very interesting um it's uh you get to the interest rate is five percent for the period i, I think it's like uh, per annum five percent like debt right it's it's still debt yeah, yeah but it's it still comes from that microfinance angle they still do a lot of due diligence um, there's, they don't ask for collateral, but they, this process is very stringent just to make sure that you'll be able to pay back. And the payment is similar to the microfinance model. Yeah, and but I also heard that the you win one as well is coming back. No, that's a grant. Mm -hmm. That's so a grant, so that's, that's like free, free money. money. Yeah. I love all these free money things. That's What's like the turnover for the Lagos one when you apply? Do you have any idea how long it takes for you to get that kind of money? Well, it's it's actually very short. It's, it's very short, but they, they are targeting micro to small businesses. Yeah. So the the funding is uh, between five hundred thousand and five million. So it's oh. not something for businesses like yours. Yeah, it's for the small <laughs> boys. I claim it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Uh, but I, was, I mean, I think so. What are the things that you need to do to get ready for fundraising? So you've raised from like different sources now. So you said you've raised from, um, you know, from a more institutional um, source, but also like competitions and grants. But if you're getting ready to actually raise, um, and in my case, I've raised from family and friends. One of the things I think is you need to start thinking about having good corporate governance, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what else would you need to put together? So have your books together so good financial yeah, records the records all put of that put it together even if it's just starts with just uh, two lines mm -hmm. just make sure that you have the inflow the outflow written somewhere yeah. and somebody just structured like can help you put it well, right? yeah, true yeah so, so your company documents your CAC all those things mm -hmm. people would usually ask okay. um, about those things if you have your books together it should be relatively easy from so there are some things the investors try to learn from looking at your books your discipline what the company structure looks like, what your costs where, are, what your costs are, where your profit is, mm -hmm. where you're trying to go, because they would also usually maybe ask you for a business plan mm -hmm. or, or like something of that, deck, or right? a pitch deck, yeah. which is like some things that Nigerians typically <laughs> would almost never do. So you have yeah. to have. The I, truth is, a lot of times you may not follow those things, yes. but they want to know that you are thinking At about least you how are you yeah. thinking mm -hmm. exactly. So, and I think a business plan is generally a good idea to put down, even for yourself, just to help you 
have the points of what you're trying to do as a business and also see where you're trying to uh, go to. So I know in my example, a lot of my ideas can be stuck in my head and I have a very good idea. But the minute I write it down, it's easy to share within the team mm -hmm. and also to take to investors. So mm -hmm. I think those are some good pointers in which very you should true. look out for if you're starting to, to look at raising. Mm -hmm. So very thank you very much. Let me shake you so that I can tap into Please the Let me just anointing. tap yeah. your anointing <laughs> was, as well. It was great to be here. Thank, thank you. you so much. So guys, you heard it here first. 300000 for free money as a source of funding for a business mm -hmm. is pretty, pretty amazing. So I think people always get... Amazing. That's, that's an understatement. You can't be using 300,000 for amazing. That's something so else. We need to find is... a new word. Yeah, yeah, we will yeah. get back to you on the word. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to reach out to me, um, you can reach me on at Honey Ugundei on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And you? You can reach me at Tunji Andrews, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, everything, basically. Any internet. network also not invented, you can find We're him there. We're there before everybody. And Wizam? So for me, it's just I am Wizam. I am Wizam on Instagram. And at Indani TV using the hashtag Analyze This. My name is Honey Ogunde, and this has been another episode of Analyze This. Catch you guys next time. Thank you.